Hey y'all, once again, welcome back. In today's video, we'll continue our series highlighting some of America's greatest model railroads. We'll be showcasing one individual train, this Utah Belt export loaded coal train, as it makes its way from mines in Utah to ports on the East Coast. We'll visit various layouts as it makes its way across the country. I look forward to sharing. Let's go ahead and get started. In part one of this video, we visited John Parker's layout as we watch this train originate from mines in Utah and make its way over the Fall River Division. Today, we're in East Central Texas on Pierre Larson's incredible modern Burlington Northern Santa Fe and Union Pacific model railroad. This Utah Belt coal train was profiled for a southern route across the United States, taking it south out of Colorado and through Texas. Here, we're on Union Pacific's Fort Worth subdivision, headed east towards Louisiana. To the right is also Union Pacific's Austin subdivision. These two subs meet at the Diamonds and Waycross, which we'll see in just a minute. You can hear the dynamic brakes as the engineer slows the train. He's running on an approach signal, meaning a yellow light, which indicates to train crews they'll have to prepare to stop at the next signal. We'll see that here, just outside of Waycross. Here at the west end, we have a red over red, which is a stop signal indication. And the dispatcher will hold our train here for a northbound manifest freight out of Austin. Southern Pacific heritage on the Austin sub shows as the old signals are still standing and have a green light for the northbound manifest quickly approaching Waycross on the Austin sub. With the Union Pacific Manifest clear, the dispatcher gives our train a diverging approach, permission through the diamond and into the siding at Waycross. Amtrak's westbound Texas Eagle is approaching Waycross on the main line, and we've been routed into the siding to make way for the passing Amtrak train.
As you can see already, Pierre is an incredible artist and master at recreating modern scenery. And particularly, the buildings here are second to none. Pierre Larson is the owner and operator of Summit Custom Cuts, a company producing modern structures and accessories for HO scale layouts. So any of the buildings here, from gas stations to hotels to the Waffle House and everything in between, feel free to check him out on his website, where he has most of his work for sale. So check out summitcustomcuts.com for more information. Now clear of the main line, this train will hold at the east end of Waycross, waiting for some westbound traffic. Approaching from the east is Amtrak train number 21, the Texas Eagle, which originated in Chicago, Illinois, is bound for San Antonio, Texas, and points west in California. After a quick station stop in Waycross, Amtrak 21 continues westbound for Dallas, Fort Worth, and points west. BNSF also has trackage rights on the UP Fort Worth subdivision, and it's common to see BNSF freights and intermodals on this portion of the line. The dispatchers lined a westbound BNSF grain train with DPUs through Waycross. We'll wait for this train to pass on the main line before departing the site. With the westbound traffic passed and a clear signal out of the siding, the dispatcher has given our train permission onto the main line to continue eastbound out of Waycross.
Further east, outside of town, we're in the plains of central Texas, and we catch our train at speed as it continues eastbound. Further to the east were the small Texas town of Clifton. Here, the dispatcher's coordinated another meet and has lined us into the siding. We have a diverging approach signal, which is red over yellow, indicating to the train crews to proceed through the switch and prepare to stop at the next signal. With the coal train now off the main line and stopped in the siding, the dispatcher will make way for an approaching Z train. Z train is the letter designation for some of the highest priority intermodal traffic on the railroad, and the dispatcher will do everything they can to keep him moving. So with the main line clear, the approaching westbound Z train gets a clear signal through Clifton on the main line. This is one of Union Pacific's busiest main lines across the southern United States, and close behind is another westbound freight. This BNSF ethanol train has trackage rights over the Fort Worth subdivision. Trackage rights are an agreement between railroads, where BNSF, per se, does not own the tracks, but they have an agreement with Union Pacific, the owner of this line, to run their trains over this portion of the railroad. We catch this ethanol train one last time along the Lonesome Texas Highway, headed west for Waycross, Texas, and beyond.
With the westbound traffic clear, the dispatcher has given us a green light out of the siding and back onto the main line to continue east. Headed east out of the siding, the tracks begin climbing up grade and through the middle of downtown Livingston. Here the tracks go right through the middle of town and in front of the courthouse, which makes for some incredible scenery. Our train will continue east out of Texas and through the southeastern United States. I hope you enjoyed this video and tour of Pier Larson's incredible model railroad. Stay tuned for more videos of Pier's layout and also operations of this Utah Belt coal train across other great American model railroads. If you have any questions about this video or things that you saw, definitely let me know in the comments section below. Thank you to Pier Larson for letting me visit and always thank you for watching. So until next time, I'll see you later.